Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Here, this is the spot. Where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Welcome home, Brains. There's only one requirement to hang out on the edge, is that you open your big brain and close your small mind. Did you bring your thinking caps? It's time to put them on, because the conversation starts Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. Hello. You are at the place, the spot, the location where the conversations are pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Today, we're going to talk. Yes, we're going to share our voices. But what are we talking about? Is our message clear? Is it concise? Is it impactful? Is it insightful? Or is it gossipy? Is it rude? Is it all over the place, scattered? Or is it suppressed? There's a lot of women out here that have suppressed their voices. And, you know, when they finally do speak up, people don't take you seriously. So we're going to cover the gamut with our guest today, Becky Rich. going to talk about speaking and being an orator because that's how I got started and a whole lot more. Let's welcome her to the show. How are you today, Miss Becky? Hello, hello. So good to be with you. And hello to the brains out there. Good to be with you. Well, we are glad to have you. And talk about this conversation, because I'm going to tell you, word on the street is that women talk too much. <laughs> <laughs> have you heard that? You know, you're just running your mouth. You're just running your mouth. Okay, well, you know, and a lot of times that comes from men when you're telling them off. But- to be able to have a voice, uh, to be able not to have that fear, because public speaking is one of people's greatest fears, to stand up in front of a crowd. But when Absolutely. you stand up in front of a crowd, you want to be taken seriously. You want to yeah. be clear. You want to be concise. You want to get out all those filler words, the ums, the ahs, the you knows. You want to be able to tell a story from the beginning, the middle, and recap at the end. So you're going to go uh, over that with us in a little bit more. But tell us a little bit about how you found your voice. Yes, thank you. So my voice, I I didn't actually realize that my voice was suppressed. And that was one of the things that was holding me, me back from doing the things that I felt called to do. So growing up, I, you know, I was pretty outgoing as a little kid, but I feel like I started, I got shy as I got to middle school and high school. I was never in any kind of leadership programs and I didn't play sports. So I didn't get any introduction like that. Um, and there we go. You know, they're just growing up, not super outgoing. I found women speak though, you know, fast forward to 2018. I had become a transformational coach and I found myself feeling very shy about promoting myself and starting with online and at a later age, I felt it was, I felt very held back, but I know I love coaching and I love what's possible for people when they get coaching. And so I was committed to being able to reach people. So thankfully I had a friend that posted online and invited me to an event and it was, it was a women's speaking event. And it was at that event that I witnessed women speaking powerfully with an ease and a confidence that I had never witnessed before. And I wanted what they had. And so after the, the event, I spoke to one of the speakers and she told me about Women Speak. And Women Speak was actually founded by Casey Baker. And she, um, what Women Speak is, is we offer circles. And so the speaker invited me to her circle and I just basically jumped in off the, you know, imagine the high dive pool and I just jumped in and joined her circle. So well, that was important yeah. to have support because yes. that way you feel confident. Yes. Uh, I know I started my speaking when I was uh, working at the utility company and I had never seen a black woman command an audience the way that our facilitator did. 
Mm-hmm. She moved yeah. like a gazelle. She mm-hmm. told the story. I was captivated. I hung on to every word that she said. And yeah. I said, you know, I want to do that. Yeah. And people applauded. And she knew how to pause. And she knew how to reiterate uh, a conversation. She knew how to throw in a joke. Yes. And I asked her, much like you did after our seminar, I said, where did you learn this grace and this ease and how to command an audience? She told me Toastmasters. Yes. I was like, Toastmasters? She said, yes, it's a free nonprofit organization. Mm-hmm. I joined it. Next thing I know, I'm the president of a chapter. <laughs> and I, I absolutely loved it because it taught you parliamentary procedure and how to step to the lecture and how to exit the lecture. And it was a lot. So I yeah. know how powerful these programs can be. There's a yeah. lot of women in corporate America that want to give a presentation or want to give a speech. And when they stand up, it could be two people. It could be 2000 people. They're frozen. Yes. So it also gives you uh, tips and tricks on how to just kind of look at the first few people in the audience and pretend they're all naked. <laughs> <laughs> so yes. when you have so, these circles, so tell us a little bit about yeah. what happens in the women speaks circles. Yes. So with it, that was a great example. So when someone does stand up, like you said, either they're in front of two people or a thousand people, a lot of times we get rushed with this surge of energy and that energy, which I felt it today, you know, I'm going to share here. This is public speaking. And I felt this rush of energy. And one of the things that Women Speak teaches is the truth about the fear around public speaking. And it is in how we label this energy that we get into trouble. And so one of the things that is different with Women Speak is that we know that this energy, when you're speaking in a, an environment that is safe, because we know that not all environments, you know, there is risk right. with different speaking up. But one of the things that we believe is that this energy is coming to prepare us, to give us presence and charisma and power. And so when that energy comes in, we don't tell ourselves we're in danger because we're not in danger. We have a great opportunity to share. We tell ourselves that this energy is here. It's our friend and it's our power. And so part of the Women Speak program, a majority of the Women Speak program is rewiring our nervous system around speaking up and creating that relationship and opening to that energy instead of having it be like, it's not there to hurt us it's there to help us and so yes so and it's a building block I mean there are women that want to you know speak at the PTA meeting it doesn't have to be corporate America it doesn't have to be at an event but then you have the the women that want to be command speakers and I get a lot of those on my show right what I always tell Um, them is practice 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 yes stand in front of the mirror and speak to yourself Pretend that it is an audience. Listen to yourself. Record yourself on your device. Remove the filler words, the uh, 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 uh. And when the kids say like, if they say like to me one more time, I'm going to come about the ground. It's like, Miss April, it's like, you know, really like, we can do this. It's like, it's like, it's like, like is something that you prefer. It's not a filler word. Yes, yes. And so those kind of things and having a structure so tell us a little bit about the structure that you teach uh, your clients in speaking and how to prepare for a presentation. Yes, thank you. So women speak, we're building building blocks. So there is there's specific topics that we teach and all of that can, all of those um, techniques or you know building blocks can build into a larger talk. And so really, I really have a lot of compassion for the woman that wants to speak up and can see herself giving that talk or leading, but feels held back. So my heart is very much for the beginner who has that that dream to do those things. And so we enter into the circle, which can be a six-week or 12-week or 16-month 
program and we work through those topics so that you can build a larger talk in the speaker certification you can build a larger talk and it's building those skills it's getting speaking practice it's allowing yourself to feel sometimes more uncomfortable than you've ever allowed yourself to be to be able to speak and you get connected to the value of what you have to say you learn the skills to be able to actually insert your voice into wherever you feel called whether it's giving a talk on stage there are women in meetings that have a seat at the table and don't feel confident in what they have to bring to so they're feeling held back there so that there's topics to be able to bring your voice forward, insert yourself into the conversation. Because so many, so that is, it's a building process. Of, and it's of fun unfolding. too. And it's yeah. fun and you know what? You can't be in your feelings brains. <laughs> <laughs> no brain. You can't be in your feelings because it is a learning safe environment. You're gonna make yes. gaps, you're gonna make mistakes. But yes. other people are listening to you and they are going to help you organize. It's like when you write a book, you know, my Absolutely. girlfriend taught me a long time ago. She said, the red pen is actually your friend. It makes Absolutely. it better. Absolutely. You know, critiquing you absolutely makes it better because once you deliver, it's like having a baby. It's out there. It's out there. And if, it's it's, out there. if it's ugly green with four ears and two noses and one mouth, it's still your baby. That's so right. What you want to do is you want to practice it. So in women speak, we the the culture in women speak is we are focused on fertile listening, listen, giving our undivided attention and attention and creating that environment so that you know when you know someone is listening to you, you give them your best. And so we focus on fertile listening, celebration, celebrating what is perfect and wonderful about this what you just gave. And then we focus on refinement. In Women Speak, we don't do criticism or feedback, but we do focus on refinement to say what could have made this land more powerfully. And so that you're able to start and, and refine as you go. And sometimes, you know, we've heard a lot about the messy first draft. And it's like, sometimes people don't even get to the messy first draft. And if you're going to give a talk, you're going to have a mess. You have to be able to allow yourself to start before you can even, you know, get to that really uh, great place where you give a talk. And so, so that is um, the culture of women speak. And then we also agree to confidentiality in our, in our circles, to be a stand for one another, to be able to speak our truth, even if the other people don't share what we believe. And we agree to not disparage anyone in our shares or talks. And this creates a very safe environment for people to do the thing that is terrifying for most people. And I am just, I'm so thankful the, for the program. Even though I was shy, I have been able to speak up in, on stage, in person, give a talk online. My mom is, uh, we're in the HOA. I had to speak up in the HOA meeting, which I have a history of, I was a massage therapist. I don't have experience doing that, but Women Speak has made it possible for me to cultivate my own leadership. And that's what I think is so important for women to be able to step more and more into their leadership, to be able to insert their voice wherever they feel called to make their unique contribution. So just, that's really important to me. And well, it you know, seems like that you're excited and elated <laughs> about it. And that's, what's the most important thing is that you love what you do. Yes. And have a powerful <laughs> message. I mean, you could yes. talk about planting in the garden or you could talk about world peace. Uh, sometimes I like that you have this sister camaraderie because yes. there's things that women have suppressed and their mouths have been shut for a long time emotionally, financially, and the relationship, sexuality, all of these things. So now you are able to command and take control of the narrative. And that's yeah. what's so important. You are able to rewrite, edit, filter, and deliver your story, your truth. Yes. And, and you become, what I've found is that I now am in control of when I speak up. I don't, I am the one that shushes myself 
And so I now am in control of when I allow myself to speak and I have the tools to be able to do that. And that I think is something so important for each of us to be able to claim our voice and be able to speak up when we feel called to speak up. Another thing, Brains, just a suggestion on my part. Don't go to the lecture and say, oh my God, this is my first time and I'm so nervous. People don't know what you're going to say right. until you say it. Right. Until it comes out of your mouth. Take your time. A two minute, three minute talk is a lot of time, believe it or not. Yes. So what is, what is the end result? What do you want people to feel? Do you want them to feel joy? Do you want them to, are you trying to close a deal? Are you, you know, trying to make a sale? Are you just trying to deliver some information? Uh, are you a brand ambassador? What is it that you're trying to deliver? So think about that. Put a lot of thought into it. And like I said, practice makes perfect. Two, three times. I do it all the time. Two or three times in the mirror before I stand in front of the audience. And then when you get the response from the audience, the whole situation may change. You know, you may want to incorporate something else. You might want to delete something else. Yes. Um, it's very important. It's like reading out loud. You know, that was a big fear. I grew up dyslexic. So letting that, you know, oh my God, I might stumble over a word or I might not be able to pronounce this word. People are going to laugh at me and this, that, and the other. And I don't care now. If, yeah. And I'm still, I'm 61. I still have a challenge. If I come across it, I own it. This is one of my gifts now that I am able to orate and speak because I overcame blah, 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 blah. And you would not believe how the audience embraces that with a, oh, okay. That judgment is gone. You know, yes. like the grammar yes. police, you know, they're, they're, they're sitting there and they're like, oh, okay. I won't be so harsh on people next time because we don't know what they might have, you know, had to overcome. Absolutely. And Absolutely. it's a great example for your children. Yes. It's a yes. great example for your children because you want them to know that you do have a voice, that, you know, what you say is important and yes. how you say it. Absolutely. You know, I look at some of these politricians, that's what I call them, on <laughs> TV, and I'm so disappointed. I'm saying to myself, how in the world did you get this job? When you cannot deliver and the English language, you cannot command, you can't go through, you know, I know that you have to pick their words very carefully because it's what they do, but aren't you prepared? Don't you, you know, aren't you reading off of the teleprompter? What right. is, it? and then how you present yourself, yes. you know, do you look nervous? You know, are you calm? How do you hold your hand? All these things are very, very important. So right. let's ask you some fun, fun questions about you, <laughs> Jackie Rich. Yes. What's been your favorite presentation? What's been your favorite talk that oh, you've my, presented? My favorite talk. Oh, that is a great question. I gave a talk for the Women Speak Mastermind, and that was my favorite talk. It was personal and, and it led to one of the things that I'm really passionate about is the positive uncomfortable and sharing about how to do the positive uncomfortable. So that was yeah. definitely my one of my favorites. Well, tell us a little bit about the positive uncomfortable. Okay, the positive uncomfortable is that area where you, you know, they say the only way out is through, but how do you go from when you're in your comfort zone to you know doing the thing that you feel scared to do and i now know that it's by entering the positive uncomfortable which is allowing myself to do something that's scary but good for me and there is i don't know if there's any other way than the than public speaking to be able to do that <laughs> so it's really you had mentioned something earlier too about the thoughts that we, you know, are feeding ourselves about our ability or fears. And it is that our self-talk has the power to talk us into and out of doing things. And as I enter the positive uncomfortable, it's where I know that those thoughts, those doubts are going to pop up. But being that I am committed to that, committed to growing and knowing that, I'm able to, to step in and do things that part of me is scared to do. So it's really uh, an amazing. I love amazing that. Talk. 
I love that. <laughs> So being comfortable in the uncomfortable, I get it. Absolutely. And knowing that growth is kind of uncomfortable and, but being committed to, you said, what do you want the audience to feel? I know what's possible for women when they liberate their voice and, and I can allow myself today, even to be uncomfortable to, to do something new because I know it's good for me and it's, it's helping me reach the people that I want to, to help. So say and yes powerful you know uh there are women that are abused in yes. abusive situations and the man has not put his hands on them but he's put that voice to them yes and that neuro-linguistic programming has set in to make you feel that you're not worthy yes that you're less than that you're needy that you're ugly that you're this that you're that 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 yeah so you have to reprogram that and a mastermind is a great way to do that is yes. to be able to share because you are who you are. Yes. But also gossip. Mm. Since we're talking about talk. Okay. Let's talk yeah. about it. Okay. There's always going to be an exchange of information. Yes. But it's how you do it. Yes. And what is your intention? Because you know, women's uh, tongues can be like switchblades. Yes. Yes. It can cut you in half. Oh, she's not this. And he's doing this. And she's fat. And she's this, and she's that. Well, you know what? What I need you to do is stand butt naked in the mirror and look at yourself mm -hmm. yeah. and see what reflection you see. Do a little mirror work, right. you know? Do a little breath work. Be yeah. careful what comes out of your mouth. Absolutely. So that leads to my next question. If your words had an odor, what would they smell like, Becky? Ooh. <laughs> They would smell like Lang Lang and an orange, sweet, <laughs> you wow. know, and especially, hopefully most of the time, depend, you know, I do, I am a mother and so I could be a little ornery, you know, <laughs> but, you know, um, but it's even within that, I want to encourage, you know, and lift up and empower. And so hopefully it'd be, you know, it's a sweet smell. Even with I, my youngest, I'm encouraging them to pursue and to work hard and to, um, you know, to allow themselves to be positively uncomfortable because even our young people, you know, there's, there's a lot of pressure. And so, oh, yeah, there's yeah. a lot of pressure. Uh, and be careful of the words that you intake. Yes. Be careful yes. Of, of what, you know, consider the source. <laughs> you consider yes. the source. Because sometimes we are resonating a negative energy or less than positive, or it could yeah. grow or it could develop. Okay. You take that into consideration, but then look at the source. What is yes. the relationship? Is this really impactful? Is this insightful? Is this a growth opportunity? Is this a learning yes. opportunity? Because yes. people will say some stuff to you that will just really turn you upside down. If my right. words kind of had an odor or a taste right now, I think mine would be a rich butterscotch toffee. Mm, I love that. <laughs> because it's rich, it's creamy, it smells good, but it sticks. There we go. And I want it to stick. If you were an appliance in the kitchen, Mrs. Rich, <laughs> what appliance would you be and why? Well, the first thing that came to my mind was the stove. We have a gas stove. So that flame that I, as nice as I am, what I'm offering puts, you know, you're the pot and it, that flame kind of heats you up, you know, but it's, uh, it's for the good, you know, to cook something delicious. And so Absolutely. I would have. <laughs> and you've got Everybody. options. you got about four or five burners. You can broil it. You I can think, bake it. Yeah. You can air fry it. I get it. I think I'm going to be today. I'll, I change. <laughs> today, I think I'm going to be the dishwasher. There we go. Okay. Because cool. it's, it's of service. Yes. It keeps it clean. Uh. And all I have to do is just push a button and walk away and 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 let it do its thing. So that's there we fine. go. <laughs> if you could time travel, what mm -hmm. period of time would you land in? Oh, that's a great question. If I could time travel, I would go back to when my great great grandmother 
came over from Italy. She left her mother um, to, to come to America. And I would love to be able to be alongside her and just travel with her a little bit to where she opened a shop in Chicago with, she had, she could not speak English. You know, she, it was in the Italian neighborhood, but just to be with her, she had so much self-confidence and she took action and she delivered babies and she, you know, did all these things with no formal education, but just unbelievable self-belief and faith that she was able to do that. And I would just love to just be with her in that time. But again, like you said, she was a woman that did not speak the language, but she had a voice. Oh. She had and a, a lot of times, yes. women, what I want you to consider is your presence. Yes. How you carry yourself. Do you smile? Do you give another woman a compliment? Do you say thank you? Are you grateful? Are you gracious? When you stick your hand out, do you have chipped up nail polish? Or is it is it either on or it's off? I'm telling you, these things, your breath. Do you have a nice mint when you go to speak to someone? Or is it hot like you need a gas mask? These things uh, people take note of, you know, how you dress, how you prepare yourself when you go to the theater, you know, are you looking like you're really going and you're dressing up to entertain uh, yourself or, or to even receive a compliment? The conversations that you have with people are very important. People take mental note of that. It speaks volumes, whether you say it does or you know you think it does or it doesn't. Believe me, people judge you on that. And the less judges you have, the you know you don't have to be in the the court of public opinion. I think I go futuristic. I want to be like in three thousand. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see what's going on in the future. I've already done the past. I've got the history yeah. books and, and all that <laughs> kind of stuff. But I think I would go to the future. What is your superpower, Becky? Ooh, my superpower. I would say my superpower is that I've come to the place of loving myself and allowing myself to be myself unapologetically and be able to show up and do the things I feel called to do and do my best today. So I, I feel very much that is my superpower. Just well, go it's, in. <laughs> it's working. It's really working. You, just, you haven't stopped smiling the whole interview. And I can really appreciate and attest to that. You're feeling good about yourself. And there's nothing wrong about that. You know, there are people that have been shy or depressed or introverted or this, that, and the other. Um, but smile every now and then look people in the eye give Ooh. them an opportunity to respond i know we went to italy you were talking about italy yes and i'm from california i'm friendly hey, how you doing you know, <laughs> blah, 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 blah. and people were like a little reserved so i said well let me try a different tactic let me acknowledge them let me smile let me look in their eyes mm -hmm. and i got a different reception everybody's not the same their culture is not the same, the way that they're received. I mean, there's some cultures that women can't even look you in the eye. Right. You right. have to look down. So there are other ways of communicating with your body language. Yes. That's why I was talking about your appearance and, you know, mm -hmm. you know how, how you smell, how you stand, how you walk. These yeah. are other forms of communication outside of what comes out of your mouth. They speak volumes. Yes. Becky, you have just been a wealth of information. I appreciate and value you so much. Mm -hmm. I'm so happy that you're in this great space and that you're helping other women find their voice um, and through Thank difficult you. situations, through yes. everyday conversations when they're at work, even when they're having that tough conversation with their kids yes, or their spouse. There's a safe place and it is called Women Speaks. Talk to us a little bit about how to get in contact with you and how we can have other individuals join the group. Yes. So I think the best way right now to connect with me is on Instagram at hello from Becky and also on Facebook. I'm in um, 
yeah, thank you, Rich. I, I can post my post my links, but that is the best way right now to uh, get connected and and find out more. I can also um, let me see. Yeah, or you can email me. So I'm not put my information in there. All right. Is this a uh, is this a monetized group? Is this a yes. uh, non non uh, Okay, so there's yes. it's a component, it's a business opportunity. All right, yes. I just want people, I just want people to know that and be clear with yeah. that because you know what, some things you can't put a price on. And right. if you can work with a dynamite group like this that has proven results, it's worth the investment. You're making an investment in yourself. You're not making an investment in Becky. You're yeah, not making no. an invest, you are making an investment in yourself, and that's absolutely wonderful. And I see absolutely nothing wrong with it. I just wanted oh, people yeah. to know. Um, Absolutely. That there, are yeah. that there are their choices as well. Uh, do yeah. they get like maybe a workbook and, you know, you have uh, availability to work with a coach one-on-one -on -one or a group? Right now I have, right now I'll be offering in a six week intensive starting in January. And so with each of the women speak programs, there is a manual and there's also videos of the founder, Casey Baker, teaching it. And then we also practice with, within each circle, the practices. And then there's a social media share component. So if you're wanting to work on your social media presence, there are specific speaking practices you learn and a specific social media share. So it's, um, yeah, it's very thorough. And there's a lot of practice. So. Well, that's wonderful because yes. again, we need to practice, 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 practice what you preach and what you Absolutely. preach is what you speak. Thank yes. you so much, Becky, for being here on the Edge Brains. Go in, check it out. It doesn't yes. hurt Thank you to you. check it out. Go in, listen, like, love, share, leave a comment. I did have one more thing. I'm sorry. I do have an intro course and that is something that we can connect with on Instagram so that that's a free option to be able to experience women speak. So that is something that uh, anyone can can do and get a taste of the work that we do. Okay, well, get your taste buds ready because uh, yes. we have some Lang Lang <laughs> and we have some butterscotch. So the taste is right for the palate. Thank you so much. I wish you the best. Brains, go in, listen to other edgy conversations. You can find us too. On LinkedIn, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, Blog Talk, iTunes, Mixcloud. I could sing them to you. I really could. <laughs> but, uh, I want you to go in and find your voice, okay? You need to be heard. Thank you yeah. so much, Becky. You are the best. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Brains. All right. Bye, Brains.